Hello everyone, and uh, thank you for inviting us for giving a talk here. Um, Paul and Carol, um, we have a lot of stuff to show, and I think I'm going to start this way. So that's us, <laughs> this uh, couple of books we designed. Um, it's a photo from like three years ago. And this is the school we have studied. It's in Stuttgart, it's an art academy. It's slightly different different system. In Germany you have like two school systems. You have like a kind of like an SBA thing and you have like art academies. And um, if you go into an art academy, it's more, you need more discipline or you like have smaller classes. You have kind of like a master class. And we both met in Stuttgart at the master class um, where students from Nikolaus Troxler, maybe some of them, know him as, and he's a very influential poster designer for like his jazz posters. And that's a city center in Stuttgart. And it's a pretty boring place. I didn't <laughs> stay there that long. And that's us, very young, where we had like <laughs> our first studio experiences. In, and we lived in the same building and we had like two flats in the building. And we were just working as students, like in my flat. And he was living below me and we had like a lot of like, I think it's great if you have someone below you you're like really a good <laughs> friend with because you can just turn on the music and play it very very loud all night. <laughs> and here like the first, one of the first poster designs we did um, while we were still students. Um, that on the left is from, it's mine and that is from Sebastian. Here another set of posters and you can see the influence definitely from Niklas Troxler, you know, using type and like spread it on the on the sheet and just move it around. Um, and this is um, a poster we designed for an artist we met in Istanbul while I was like on a workshop and he was like from our school and I didn't know that. So I just walked into like an exhibition and um, I looked at a, at a piece there and I, I read the captions at the wall and he was like, oh, he's from Stuttgart, where is this guy? So I was like finding the guy and then after I met him, I just ran in on the campus back in Stuttgart, I just ran into him and then he commissioned us like designing that. So the thing is like at an art academy, we were together with like a lot of like people from the creative field, like interior designers, architects, painters, sculptors, and yeah, artists like him. And I, I, and I think that was very, very nice like being together with all these people from other creative fields. So that's the artist on the um, on the right side, and one of his pieces on the left, like some scaffold in the middle of nowhere. And that's the, I think it's the second book we ever designed. And the funny story with the book is, if you look at it, okay, it has a title, but after the book got printed and it came back, I was like, okay, it has a title on the cover, but where is the artist's name? <laughs> so we just totally forgot to put in the artist's name. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and it was also like the first, we, we designed a book before, very, that was, we don't show that because it's really not good. But it's like, this, um, this one was the first time we also worked as an editor. So if you design books, you also have like an editor or like a, a proofreader, you have a production or like all these things. So what we did, we just designed a jacket. There's like um, a die cut punch in there. And as you can see, like the red line is like the element we just went, we used like on the poster and here's some spreads. And here the red line again. And from this book, where we were like on press, usually if you do books, you go on press to check color, like press check. I don't know, maybe some people are familiar with that. And these are like the proof print sheets. And while these proof print sheets came out of the machine, we were like, okay, we're gonna take them and just screen print on them. So what we did, like we, take, we took these large proof sheets and just um, printed on them and made like kind of like a poster, poster series out of that. Um, through that artist, so these artists were like uh, were studying with us. He was like, we met a friend of the other artist. He was like, he's a very naive. His art is kind of naive, as you can see here. He's like trying to ride a motorcycle as one, or he's building this, I don't know, do you say paper boat? <laughs> and like, try, trying to float down the river, which like didn't work. And we designed a book for him. You know, this is one of the images we took, like the far on the left, I think. Um, 
designed this book, uh, this book and used like poster paper. It's like some paper you don't usually use for designing a book. And it comes like two-sided. I don't know if some people know the paper. So you have like a very glossy white surface and on the other side is like a very raw, like blue surface where you put like glue on it that it's just um, holds at the wall. And so we, it's a Chinese block binding. So we had like all the type we used in the book is like on the blue side and all the images were like on the, on the white glossy. And here's some spreads with type and some works of him. It's a nice piece. He was like um, searching the trash cans of like um, housing people and like pulled out all these magazines from people and just collected all the scribbles they did and put them in a series. And that's, that's the book itself. It becomes like kind of like an object with this paper. See. And here's a picture of the process where you can see on the left, you know, it's like we usually, we call it like image flow, we're doing a lot of image flow, we try to do out how does it work. Um, you know, it's a narrative you build up when you like select like a lot of images and it needs kind of like function and you can work with different contrasts on that. So on the right you see like color tests of like, okay, there's more blue, there's more yellow. Do we go with like on the far right you see like a green and blue which was like also like an idea to use or specific type sizes. And through that person we met um, another artist and this is a piece of him that he always tries, to, he always like worked with like cars or vehicles and try to distort them and morph them and slice them and this is an object in the, land, in the landscape and for him we designed this book um, called Andanti Con Moto and for this book, we slice like the first pages of the book, like the width of it, we just change so it gets wider and wider. And this is one, this is another object he designed, and this is a poster design for his exhibition show. A lot of time when we design these books, or like we get commissioned these books, you also end up like thinking wider. You, you, you have, you design a poster, you design sometimes like collateral for for the exhibition show um, and sometimes it really comes from the book cover you know you have like elements on the book cover and they're gonna get pulled like on all these on tickets or whatever they have for um, but still in Stuttgart studying we were always interested in type and this is like a free project we did where we just designed like, typefaces we, uh, based, both, both, both are based like on a modular grid and this is a self-initiated project, project called um, Utopia as a varnish jacket this is um, the book cover and this book, for this book this was the first time we designed like a whole um, typeface, a font family with that and the topic is Utopia and here you can see it's like different descriptions Okay, the German, but it's different descriptions of, um, from books we collected about Utopia laid out in a smaller booklet. So you can only read like one of these descriptions when they are like, let me just turn the page. And in this book, on the left and on the right, you see these little dots thing. It's a die cut, so we didn't use page numbers, we just used symbols. We um, as as an index for the whole book. These are other spreads of books. This you can only read when you hold it to the light, so it's like reversed. So you need to see through through the paper, the left hand page, and statistics and drawings or folders with graphics and type in there. And then the artist. Um, with the scaffold before the first guy we just met in Istanbul. He designed a series, it's called German Skies, and these are the actual artworks. And here are six colors of the artworks and the format. And this art piece was like based on on, on colors the military, the Royal Navy used to paint the airplanes, so the British military used to paint the airplanes to imitate the German sky. And the book is called German Skies. So that they, they can't see the airplanes from the from the ground where they were like atta attacking Germany. 
And this is the, the book cover we designed over that. It's like definitely influenced from the logo from the Royal Air Force, as you can see, in a crosshair. And um, for that, the typography, I think we just kept it pretty brutal, like very um, dense and bold. And here you can see, we brought the book here. We brought a couple of books, so if you want to check them out later. Um, um, <laughs> Or well, now you can you can have a you can have a look. <laughs> yeah, that's the book guy. <laughs> yeah, you can show the pages. So we tipped in all these things here, and we also found like a company, and these are all like screen printed, and these are like six of them. So you have like six spot colors in these little books, and they're like all tipped in, and you know I don't know. It's, um, when we went further in our book design world, it's like I don't know really if somebody's paying something like that anymore because it's really expensive and you want to use like six spot colors and like a small book like that and they kind of like sponsor us and we spent like a weekend you know we spent a weekend with the artists in the basement and glued them all in <laughs> so <laughs> it was like kind of like you know we were just like passionate about that work and we just wanted to use all these colors and just wanted to put them in there so we just kind of like put in our energy and put in that and yeah and I'm gonna hand it over to the I also have to say something. <laughs> it's me, Sebastian. I'm the second half. Hello. Um, uh, that's the best book about the artist Gabriela Oberkofler. She's from South Tyrol. That's the uh, northern part of um, Italy. And she's actually married with uh, Stefan Rohr, the car guy. So you see, like uh, we got commission from 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 the artists. Like they were all kind of family at the academy. So that that was the reason why we were doing these books. And yeah, she's um, schneller. Schneller means faster. Yeah. Um, uh, you can see a double spread, and um, you can see text and images. This is actually the father of Gabriela um, sitting on a horse, and the beginning of. Um, I, yeah, I'm I'm trying to speak faster. Okay, um, we designed a whole typeface for it, um, which is based um, embroidery. Is it called? Yeah, and. Um, traditional embroidery and black letters yeah and for the captions we designed underlines which um, I think these are 20s but we only use 10 so that was the passion at the beginning we still have this passion like doing things and not like the task was not like doing 10 um, we just had fun with it so we played around with it and um, here you can see the beginning of the essay which was set in that typeface which was um, quite difficult to, to, to read and there is a funny story about it um, we sent out the text to um, uh, the woman who had to just uh, proofreading the text and 10 minutes later um, after I sent out the email she sent it back and said okay it's fine and I said, yeah, but, but uh, I mean, did you read it? And she said, no, I couldn't, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's actually a nice horse. It's a halflinger. As I said, like this family stuff here, yeah, Gabriela is married with Stefan, the car guy. Um, Gabriela has a family in South Tyrol, and um, her brother uh, have a horse breeding company. So uh, we got commissioned to do the um, corporate identity. And yeah, we took the R and made, uh, huh? Horse, not horse tail. Like, yeah, like what a horse have the hairs. Yeah, <laughs> what is it? Mane. Yeah, yeah, mane. Okay, uh, that's for the R. And here you can see what we just. Yeah, we just use the R for the whole text and um, yeah, actually they, they painted it, um, that, that's the logo, and they painted it, uh, it's hand painted, so they took over this uh, corporate identity and uh, took it really serious, which I, yeah, I, I like this image. And that's the stationery, yeah, we can see always this R. And yeah, then uh, one of the next projects we did was um, for an art institution and there were two artists and they were painting um, the artworks twice. Um, 
Yeah, it makes sense. Why not? They can sell it twice. Um, uh, here you can see the artist painting um, these, these, these artworks. And um, the thing was, um, the, uh, uh, yeah, they, they uh, exhibit these art pieces in two rooms, uh, and um, they were separated, so you couldn't see both at the time. There was a tunnel uh, which was uh, connecting these two rooms, and for that we, um, yeah, we had to transfer this 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 topic to a book, and we decided to make this, um, uh, yeah. Twin book, yeah. Um, it was, um, yeah, it was glued together. Uh, so we they were printed uh, two books and then they glued it together. And yeah, you can see uh, both uh, covers where they're slightly different. And yeah, here from the top. That's that's the book. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, th just say something about it. Um, we had a budget, yeah, and um, sometimes it's really hard when you do books. Um, for example, it was budget, I think, uh, $5,000, I say. And then we got the first <coughs> estimates from the printer, and it was like 12000 and we said, okay, that's too much. And if, uh, yeah, we found a printer who were able to, 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 to have this idea, so sometimes it's really nice to work with the people and ask them how can we deal with it, and it it worked out at the end. Yeah. And in 2010, I moved to New York and started as intern um, at the Sagma Saying Studio. Here's a photo. It's like pretty old. It's like Stefan and Jessica and me on the far right. And what I did there, I designed like a couple of books with Stefan. Um, that was the first book I designed. Yeah. And maybe you. It's different content than we were used to, like with the, um, working for all the artists. And this is like a, that's a book called New Vienna. Now it's inspired. The case is inspired. It's a limited edition, actually. It's inspired by the Vienna cake called Sacher Torte. And I did like a I think a five color screen print around all whole, the whole thing, and I think it was a nightmare, like matching all the edges up and. It was it was crazy, and I think I drove the printer crazy as well. And if you take the book out, there's a book cover, and here you can see um, it was um, divided in different chapters. This is a fashion chapter. This is about architecture, um, art, and um, writers and literature, and music. And it's a bilingual book. You have like everything is like English in the front, and the back is German. And you have kind of like the inverted colors. Well, so what you kind of see here, like in the beginning, you have like the border color, and then we, I use the color here um, as a solid background color. Um, I remember like when I was there, like the client approached us to have he wanted to do like an advertising campaign, and then I think Stefan talked him into like doing a book design, and I think in that case the book does a pretty good job because if you pull out like an advertising campaign it's going to be gone but if you design a book it's still it's still an object which is like laying around as like in your bookshelf for like a couple of years so i think it's a long has a longer living like kind of book and i thought it was a good decision to make that while i was still in new york i was still working with sebastian together so um it's a free commission from a printer in paris it's a little notebook um, other international design studios designed also, I think it was a series of eight notebooks. And um, we could do whatever we want, so we were just drawing typefaces. E, there's a, there's a one and a zero, CH, numbers, like in kind of what, what we like passionate about it. And at the end, we just took the address from the printer and just spread it throughout the whole notebook, which you can see here. That's the, the back of the book. And it was the first um, artist monography for, for Ashley Pickett and I designed while I was working with Stefan. And I think it was a, it was a, big, it was a big book, or like a big thing for me. And I spent like quite a time on that. And um, there was a lot of people involved. It's like always when you design books, you have like, it's not like you have a designer, you have, you have to deal with production, you have like editors, you have like proofreaders, you, um, and and 
you maybe have a color separator somewhere, so you have, and everything like comes together at your place. So you're kind of like always sometimes. Sometimes you end up like being a project manager as well as a designer. You know, when there's no no major publisher involved. And uh, when I remember that book, I had the artist was living in Indonesia. I had the color separator in in in, in LA. I had the the publisher or the criteria. It's Damien Hurst publishers. He was like sitting in, in, in London and me in New York. And when I just went to bed, it just started in Indonesia. The emails coming, and it was like there was like a, like a 24 hour like email thing coming in. And that's the that's actually the limited edition. And this is like hand carved in Bali. Um, and it has a mother of pearl inlay and uh, and that whole design was inspired from the artist frames because he's using a lot of like mother of pearl inlays and I designed the typeface down which I used as you can see here like in a spread or like as a pattern here on the left side and these are some pages of the book there's like quotes in between you know like cropping out or silo all the artworks put them like on a, on a blank on a solid background color and here as well as an idea I came up with putting the um, um, the artworks like on a background from from painters from the 19th century. And I think on the left is a Turner, and on the right is like a Caspar David Friedrich, or it has like comes with die cut holes, or there's a comic book in there, and it's like has five different papers, or there's a fold out poster, and at the end the artist has like he had a show here in New York, and reached out to me if he can use the typeface which we used in the book. So he kind of like really took this typeface and just put it on his artworks as you can see on the right side. Which I thought is like a very nice example of like how design and art is like vice versa sometimes going together. It's another book I designed um, with Stefan. It's um, the abstract book for the Columbia here. It's a 752 page book on a bulky paper stock so it gets very very thick. And it's just we just drilled holes through that, so you can actually like see through. It's difficult to lay out, you know. I just started with four holes, and then I, oh, you, it's not working at all. And then you need to set up like your your grid that like that you can still read it, and the and the holes that is like still have an interesting balance. And that the images like even if you go like uh, full bleed like that, that that they, that they are not like. Um, totally like trashed. And I think it has 16 chapters or 15 chapters and for the chapter openers I, you know, I took the potato from the cover and had 16 different versions how you can slice a potato and arrange it around the holes <laughs> and this is one of them. I spent quite a while like photographing potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> but it kind of fits. <laughs> Same project um, um, I did uh, as well with Stefan. Um, it's not a book, it comes like a book. It's not a book, if you open it, it has an injection mold on the left. It's like objects inspired from the um, typography on the cover. And on the right hand, you see an, a website. Here we designed an app, it's the same content, we just converted like into like an app. Because you kind of like, I think even if you design digital, you you have like, you work with the same elements. I kind of like, you work with the book. You have like a headline, you have a body copy, you have captions, you have an index somewhere. It's like kind of the same elements. Again, this uh, Gabriela Oberkofler artist, uh, you will see more books later, but um, this is, I think, the third one. Um, uh, we designed, um, it's also um, again a story about budget, they had $1,000 and we had the idea of um, make a die cut for the cover and I got the estimate from the printer and it was $970 and I said okay cool let's make a cover but no content. Um, so sometimes you have to deal with that and um, for that we decided um, okay we need content so we need to print content so uh, we need to find another solution for the cover and there is this wonderful paper called 
table pa paper tablecloth is it like under cake like this yeah that's super cheap and we just um, ordered that and um, made a silk screen on it and here you can see that and because there was no budget um, as well for the production um, I had to do all the stuff on my own yeah folding the, um, the jacket and bring the jacket with the content together yeah sometimes it was with the same with the silk screen stuff it kind of was um, um, supporting the artist and here's the, the okay I should probably explain a little bit the project um, Gabriela um, she made this exhibition and people were invited to bring uh, food to the exhibition and then they had a big party at the end that's that, that was the project and here you can see uh, the installation um, how the yeah, food from the people uh, brought stuff with and that's the next book for Gabriela and we started to do um, books for an art foundation in the south of Germany and yeah now we just keep going on and um, I recently uh, sent out the files for the seventh book now it's always the same um, format and for that book it's always bilingual so uh, we just um, said okay um, we always uh, wanted to have a different solution for this bilingual uh, text so that was the first one quite boring but we just um, wanted to uh, start with the client it's always like working first time with the client um, you just yeah after a while when you get used to this client then you can develop more crazy things which you can see later on um, and for that book, uh, we wanted to show the, um, the drawings in real size. Yeah. Um, that's a book I designed for Bahamian artist Tavares Strachan. Um, the book is all about like one piece. You can see the front cover, the back cover. It's a neon artwork. And I took like kind of like the shape of a neon light as like underline as an element in there. You can see it on the bottom left in the caption and the headline. And insulation view. And on the left, an essay with like a comparative image. And from there, I designed, an, I think the first book or bigger book for like a Pakistani artist from Karachi. Um, her name is Naisa Khan. And I had always, uh, I had these calls to um, Pakistan, to her, that's her studio. And I think it has like three essay sections in between the images. It's another art piece of her, of this one. And while I was working and being on a call with her to Karachi, I remember like one day there was some national holiday there or something and they were like very very afraid of like if there's some attacks going on so they just turned off the whole mobile or like telecommunications there so it was like i thought it was like and um what i what i, what I learned like i was working at, at stefano being like here in, in in the states or from the city it was like i got used to like very in, work very internationally so we had like we ended up having clients like in moscow or beijing or or even like in Pakistan. Um, this is another book for the Art Institute Sebastian showed you before and there's a, it, it's an artwork, it's a racing track here's a, the art piece from the top a detailed shot of the book here you can see it as Polaroids and the racing track is like shifted in and out there and this was like what he said for this book series we still keep working I think for five years now um, we always try to come up with like different solution for the bilingual, and in that case, we just like shifted the text as well. Um, a book I designed for um, about documentary filmmakers. It was started with a Kickstarter program. Um, um, this Kickstarter got funded. Here you can see like first spreads how you, what you can do is like if you even have like one element, you can have it large, you can have it small, you can build up a table of content. You can have background or no background, like like inverted it, and it's kind of like a nice flow. You can build it up, like going into the book until you end up to the forward. 
Um, we didn't crop the images for the book, so we needed to keep all the images the same size, or the, or the size how the photographer de um, delivered them. And this is also challenging, like dealing with like five different formats and still have like an interesting flow. Um, another book I designed for the Bahamian artist called like Scene Unseen. Um, he had a exhibition in New York. Nobody ever visited that exhibition. It was like closed up. Me myself, I never saw it. It was also interesting. I only saw the photos and just guessed it. And then I just was drawing a floor map and tried to like have an image flow, a walk through through the exhibition. And this is the end sheet. If you open up the cover, you have like kind of like a slider function where you can read the typeface or not. These are like images from the exhibition, details of artworks, and we just draw all the artworks. It's kind of like pictograms and put them on the back end sheet. Here, that's another book for the ZF Art Foundation. It's uh, for an Austrian artist. Um, the, um, the exhibition was about 473 uh, drawings from her, and um, yeah, you can see um, a sketchbook here. And the challenge was um, because the drawings are so, um, they're all in black, as you can see here. And we asked the printer for a special um, color for it, and he was so curious about it that he found out that uh, he just put some blue into the black. And uh, finally, we got a really nice book, uh, which matched perfectly the drawings from her. We also made a big research about the paper. And yeah, we found a nice um, uncoated paper, which really matches um, her art pieces. And here you can see, um, again um, like the dealing with the bilingual stuff not really but you can see the English yeah it's printed in gold and because she uh, glued all these drawings on long paper sheets so we um, took from these from the artwork which were these paper uh, sheets we do we did also this long column it's a book for like a photographer, a friend of us. He approached us and he had like six images and he's like, oh, I want to do a book. And I was like, hey, how, how are you going to do like a book with six images? You just, either you just make it tiny and have like a lot of detailed shots of, the, of these photos until you're going to end up the whole, um, see the whole picture. And the idea was like, as I was reviewing the content and the concept was like, we're going to do something we do a board book actually that was like children books have so you can see round corners here and put like the images i think on six pages i think they have it here as well so it finally ended up like even like if there's only like six images like as a big book and we had a little little uh, booklet with it with the whole text uh, book for like um, Gabriela as well and this is one of the rare occasions you can do a cover without any type on it so which is not easy nowadays because if you work for publishers and all that they always request we need something on the cover so we put up like a fence on the cover because her exhibition she did like was based on the fence and we took kind of like the, the, the diamond shape from the fence and used it for as you can see like the typography diagonal or here even the table of content and had these little elements in there, the yeah. diamond shape. And here you can see um, installation shot. That's for the car guy again. We designed a book, you can, it's called like turning points. And our first sketches of the book was like, we want to make a book you nearly need to turn constantly, which um, the client just kind of killed because it was like, you can't, it was not very, wasn't that, they're very conservative, I would say, and, and they didn't like it. But we still kind of like ended up on the end sheet, just like turning all these things on the left side or like the inside flap. We ended up like at flipping the caption here on the left side. And this is a book I designed for, um, with Stefan as well, for like uh, Deutsch projects, maybe some people 
Now it's an art, was an art gallery here and so for like 15 years. Here's some spreads of the gallery itself. And for that book, on the top left, you see like kind of like an element. So each exhibition, it's chronologically ordered. So each, each exhibition he had came with like, the name of the exhibition was like a hand-drawn thing. And each exhibition has also like a different typeface. So you can see it here or here. And the essay is starting like on, I think on page 14 and is going through like until like page 380. So the challenge was like having the essay going through the whole book because he was just like, you know, trying to break the usual book system because when you pick up like the, one of these standard art books, you're gonna, you have a foreword, you have like an essay and then you have like plates. And it was like a way we, I thought like, it was good to have the essay next to the images, another spread of the book. Yeah, that's um, another book for the Art Foundation. Why I'm always showing these Art Foundation books now <laughs> anyway? Um, because, yeah. Um, that was an artist um, uh, from, again, Charles Tyrrell. His name is Michael Fleury. And he did masks. And he, did, uh, he took from a museum historical masks and he made, um, yeah, he put some stuff inside and then he got the inside outside. Was that? Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, to, uh, to, to make a contrast to this round shapes of, of the mass, we decided to make uh, an own typeface, like really geometric and, and, and sharp and, and yeah, heavy. And here you can see a double spread with some masks with a spot color as well in the back. And we decided to curve the columns slightly. Uh, here you can see it better, uh, which, yeah, it's uh, like the masks. Um, this is an image from a book for the Haas brothers. They're based in LA. Um, some vases they designed. Here is a close-up, and that kind of that that all the shape inspired us like to design a typeface like that. So, so the whole book is like we designed this typeface on the far right. You see, like you see that one we used for like headlines, and on the left is like for um, the body copy. And this is the cover of the book. It was their first book they ever did, and they wanted to call it like Volume One. So we just put the number one pick on the cover. Here you can see an inside spread, a left as well, like a very organic um, artwork, and on the right, a essay. This is a quote. And while we had, when we designed these things, we always print them out like very, very small that you can check if this really flows, if this works. So we are still. Even from the education, our background is still, you know, when we were at the art academy, we learned like book binding, we learned like screen printing, we did offset printing there. So, and this is something we just carried um, into the bookmaking actually. A book we designed for like a symposium. Um, it was about when an artist dies, what happened with all the artworks from the artist. And we, I think this is still one of the favorite, most favorite spines we designed. If you look at the type here, how it just like goes, and I was always thinking like, they ain't never gonna go for this. And we just like send it out like that, and I was like, oh, okay, you're gonna do it like that. Here's the um, table of content and the back cover. The inside is very, very text heavy and not that nice. Um, as I mentioned, like as students, we were always interested in designing typefaces. And this is, um, there was a Google Doodle a couple of years ago um, about Rubik. I think it was the 25th anniversary of Anno Rubik, the, the, the founder of the Rubik Cube. I'm sure like everybody knows that one. And we were commissioned to design a typeface which like worked in these little square on this cubelets. And we started like designing like a mono 
typeface which you can really place in there and yet you can still read it. And out of that we developed like a type family at the end for Google and called it Rubik. And the typeface was just, you know, it was the first time we had like this larger coming out with like a type family and then you can see that where the typeface is everywhere using on the right, I think it's some porn website in Germany it's gonna use. And, and on the left, it's gotta be like in, in, in Hebrew. We have a Hebrew and a Cyrillic, it's like some karate thing. And it was like, it's really funny, we started collecting all these things. <laughs> and a book for like an artist, Swiss artist Celine Baumgartner. We always, we, we also brought that here. Um, three piece. We need you to keep the format because there's no larger paper you can print on. So that's the maximum you can print like on a standard off the machine. There's a couple of like special offset machines where you can print larger, but I think this is the standard, the maximum. Um, so we need you to keep like in that length of that to have a, like the cover like together and not like glue different sheets together. And we wanted to have it like one piece. Here's like the front cover and the back cover. There's the essays on the inside. And this is the book with like three different booklets. And each of them has, each booklet has a different color to start and a different title because it was like always like a different artwork. It's kind of like a series she did. It's a video artist. Here's a page of the first booklet. These are the three essays and interior spreads of her artworks. Oh, this is also something, when we do something like that, we're gonna build all these small little dummy books, you know, to see, you know, it, it really helps, you know, if you, if you, if you talk to like a, a printer and like try to explain them on the phone what they, what they, what they want to do, it's not, you're not getting that far. So the best is like, you're going to build something up, you're going to make it up, you're going to make photos, you're going to send it to them and explain it to them for their understanding. Okay. Um, the next book project uh, we're going to show you is, um, again, the car guy. Uh, hopefully you're not bored of uh, showing, again, these uh, artists or German cars. Um, but we decided, um, because that's, again, the project for the Art Foundation, and um, I think it's the uh, fifth book, and we decided to do something um, yeah, more strange and more... Um, experimental and because what he's doing with the cars we decided to do with the pictures and uh, we started out to do some tests as you can see here that's the title of, 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 of the book and his name Stefan Rohr and we made some tests um, to start the project and also here you, you can see some um, we, we were working with some um, design elements and um, we printed out the the sheets and then um, we um, opened the scanner and slightly moved it o over this scanner while by the while the process of, of scanning from the machine um, here another spread and that's the cover where we end up uh, so we also did it um, with the typography and the cover and in the back you can see a detail um, it was um, kind of difficult to read but um, as I said um, they got more um, yeah, experimental with us. So we sometimes we're going with the client away. So that's I think that's that's um, a nice way to deal with it. And so about the process, it was um, the idea was I was in the uh, studio of Stefan, and we were thinking about what, what what can we do for the book, and then there was this idea popping up because um, we were showing we showed you the book before, uh, which was um, yeah we already showed all. Uh, of his art pieces there, so we decided to, okay, we can do another book with all his artworks, but um, then we decided, okay, let's take one and do something extraordinary out of it. And I had my iPhone with me, uh, and I just 
took random, not randomly, but uh, some details of one art piece. So we decided, because these books are um, only 48 pages, and um, we decided to take some uh, details and then also do that with, uh, with the pictures, this uh, movement. And yeah, the pictures get really abstract then. And that's a book I designed, it was the first book I designed for Faden. That's Peter Marino, he's an architect and I think interior designer here in New York. Uh, wearing all these leather, shiny leather things and this is the, the book cover. I used some varnish and black for the cover which I thought fits pretty well how he appears. He's an interior spread. And the book is about, he commissioned all his artists to do this. He's working for all these um, luxury stores like Chanel and Gucci, I think, worldwide. And he always commissions, he's also like a very uh, art collector, he has a big art collection. Approaches artists and commission them doing something in the store. And I thought it's a nice way if you're like an art collector and like very, have these kind of like projects to give something back in the art world to commission artists for these kind of luxury stores. Uh, different grids and page layout so there's like you need even video stills as well or like detail shots of artworks and in the back there's a, a catalog of all the um, commissions he did because not everything got like featured in the front so you have like kind of like a plate index section in the back and um, there was also, he requested like a limited edition and I wanted to do a limited edition on the right you can see inspired by what he's wearing like using leather and having like a leather snap, same bands as a leather snap and, but he wanted to use like horse leather for that and this is very very expensive and nobody wanted to use it so they kind of like killed these idea. I had like tons of rounds of like experimenting and this is like how it, the limited edition ended up, it's like plastic jacket, um, printed screen print in black and bronzy color, um, opening page and um, I pushed it a little bit more on the limited edition had like a nicer more artsy spreads like this or like that or this one from the catalog. We designed a book um, last year, no, for the 2015, we started 2015 for the Rauschenbeck Foundation. Robert Rauschenbeck did one artwork. It's called Quarter Mile. It's like a quarter mile long. I think he worked on it for like a while. And it was like exhibited the second time ever in Beijing at the UCCA. It's an arts institute there. And we worked with the Rauschenbeck Foundation in New York and the um, arts institute. It's a bilingual book. It's English, Chinese. It's challenging doing English, Chinese. Um, we need some professional. We have some Chinese typesetter we're working with. Um, they help us out and the concept of the book was like making three books and the first one you have like the essay the introduction um, in the middle you see the pictogram it's like the whole artwork we're just drawing the whole artwork and like scaled it down um, to like a pictogram on the top you have the English on the bottom you have Chinese they kind of like flow parallel see here Chinese is much shorter than English, so we're gonna put all the images in the Chinese, but you can uh, kind of like level it up at the end, otherwise you're gonna end up with like empty pages in the Chinese. Here's um, visual essays in the book. It's elements Robert Rauschenberg used, or like used um, multiple times, or this topic of the same elements. On the left you see like watches, for example. You have like you lose like watches, how they appear differently. On the right is like clothes. Yes. Here another thread, English on the top, Chinese at the bottom. And then you can turn the book and have the whole quarter mile like printed out with like numbering at the bottom. And I think it was the first time that whole piece got really represented in a book. There's some books out there, they printed like specific parts of that, but I think it was the first time. And then at the end you turn the book, you got um, a photo section, another essay, and then like photo section like photos Robert Rauschenbeck did in, while he was like in China. Same thing here, if you do something like that, it's, it's going into the, into the meeting, 
you know, telling them about what you want to do, and this can be amazing, but amazing. The best way to get something like, or like to hook like a client on a project is like to show them something, to get, that they get something in the hand, and they're gonna play around it, and they just kind of attach to them. And this is like, we do this many times, but otherwise I think it's very, very difficult to sell ideas like that. And when it comes to production, you know, they print it in China, um, you need to, it's also like a big part of that whole book design thing. You need to have a big chunk of production. You need to explain to these people where should, which wing thing get glued in and what is landscape. Otherwise it's gonna, it's not gonna happening like that. So you need to control like the process some kind. Yeah, probably just one sentence to that book was, um, uh, to 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 the uh, Rauschenberg book was like uh, we had the first meeting and they said we want to have a landscape and we don't like landscape so that was the reason why we did then both like upper uh, like portrait format and and landscape that was the starting point for that idea actually um, at that time we got an email from. Um, uh, uh, gallery from from Russia and we were like oh so excited we got an email from Russia and he's in yeah, yeah it's, it's not normal that you get an email from Russia and uh, not us I don't know how it's, how it's going for you and um, this is um, Vladi Osh Vladimir Osharenko and he's an art collector and he wanted to show his art collection um, 25 was it 25 years? Anyway, it's a long time. He was collecting art, um, Russian art, and also European art. And the book is um, about, um, yeah, he wanted to show um, that Russian art is also, um, yeah, that you can show both at the same time. And we did the book in four colors. You may probably ask why four colors? and. There is no answer. Because I can say four colors is better than one color. That that was the reason why we made four. Um, yeah, it's also again uh, dealing with um, two um, languages: the table of content, like uh, Cyrillic typeface, and uh, like Russian and, and and English, and some inside spreads. Yeah, and uh, throughout the whole book, there was um, uh, he was talking about the um, stories behind how he bought the art pieces. So it was also difficult to 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 match over, uh, yeah, around 280 pages. And yeah, each um, artist he was showing um, had a, um, a biography on the page, and there's um, a story about um, the book. Um, th Flady have a storage in Germany, and for the exhibition, um, the art pieces were uh, transported to Russia. And uh, on, on on that spread, you can see an art piece from the South African artist Anton Kahnemeyer, and uh, it was not allowed to enter Russia um, because um, I think you can read the sentence. So yeah, it's yeah, it's blasphemy. So it was not allowed. Uh, to enter Russia, but um, we put it in the book, and the um, the gallerist said, um, in the early time, every art piece uh, which was produced in Russia got a stamp on it that it was approved, like that you could show the art piece, and we designed this stamp um, which was saying Ministry of Culture from Moscow, which is not existing, but we put it on. Uh, you can imagine that the director from the museum was he was not amused about that and he freaked out. <laughs> and yeah, that's us at the uh, opening. And sometimes it's really nice because we designed, if I go back, sorry, um, there are elements on the cover um, and they are coming all from the art pieces which are shown in the content. And sometimes it's nice um, that these elements um, are used for banners and posters, uh, not from us, but from, from then the, um, yeah, from, from the Museum of Modern Art in, in Moscow. Um, that's 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 the, the the art foundation had a 25 anniversary and we did an exhibition uh, design for it with these colored stripes 
and there was also a book they um, asked us to do and that was the first draft we sent them out and they didn't like it um, so uh, we did another one with a 25 um, on the cover so that sometimes happened that you're um, designing a book and you're you really like it but the client yeah don't like it so sometimes that happens and some inside spreads the table of content um, yeah this the stripes are not colored but yeah this underline are still in in the design and yeah some it's 34 artists so a lot of stuff in over 480 pages to show Uh, that's the sixth book um, for this scholarship for Nando Angstenberger. Uh, Angstenberger means um, yeah, fear from from the mountains. So that's his name. Uh, now fear, afraid, afraid of the mountains. Yeah. And here you can see some inside spreads and the detail of of the art piece. And yeah, that's that's where we we always trying to do some some crazy stuff with the typography so uh, we took the first line and just um, yeah turn it around well, that's a book um, I don't know maybe some of you guys went to the show for the new museum and fade on together for people of the Earth, which I think was last year that's the end sheet Here's the table of content here, um, images, and you always need to work on a narrative for the images. And the special thing on the book, I think it, it's not very visible when you just flip through, but w what we did is like we, on each page, we just move the column, either to the inside or to the outside. You can see here, it's further in, and on the right, it's like further out. And so each page is kind of like different and individual. So that kind of like keeps the whole book in motion because that whole the book was only about video art. It's kind of tricky because if you look at these comparative images, um, you need to find a good spot to put them in because if the column is like in the center or like even closer to the center, there's no space. Here it spreads out the book, and sometimes it's really like a pleasure to work with good material, and I think. Um, if you have good content, I think you can. It's. It, I think it's easier to make a good book because I think, in our opinion, like a book lives from good content, and you can have like also bad content and like put all your graphic design and expressive graphic design on top of it. But I think, in our opinion, it's not really the thing we we want to do. We just more try to support the artist because it's still their name on the book, and we don't try to self-express ourselves in this book. And that show, when that show opened, you had a show opening in Zurich. Um, I didn't know that. Here on the right, you see an installation shot of the show. And I just discovered she used very, very similar elements like what we had on the cover. But I only just came up from the concept from all the images I had from the material, so I didn't know that. But it's kind of, it's. I think it's very interesting if you even look through, like, spend like a day or two days with images, what kind of like get you out there, how close you can get as well to the artist. A book for like um, Russian artist Maria Serebnikova. It's bilingual, the specialty was like, it's printed in Latvia and it has a very translucent screen print on it, um, which gives it like a very, very nice object where you can see the type, read the type, same on the back, or sometimes not. Here's some detailed shot, suppress of the book. Can we get some sound on this um, for audio, uh, for video? Is it on? Let's try. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, I should be able to get my head around that quite easily. But this is what we're going to be talking about today. It's an absolutely amazing, amazing book, and I can't wait to tell you all about it. Let's start by the way that it actually feels. It's just, I love it. It's got a textured cover here, which is, I, I, I like that. I'm not a fan of the whole glossy thing, really. Um, I like 
feeling is makes you feel good. It just exudes quality to me. You open it up and the, the, the pages are not glossy, they're matte. It's a nice paper stock and it's very simply laid out, which I like. We don't want anything garish or colours. We just want elegance. So that's what I like in a book. I like elegance in a cookbook. And this has got bundles and bundles of it. Let's <laughs> okay, that's a YouTube video you found after that book got published. Yeah. So we didn't pay the guy to do that. <laughs> but it's, funny. it's really funny how the way you book, when you book, you design a book about where it travels and where it just appears at the cover. Um, so it's a cookbook I designed for Faden, which got published, I think, this year, beginning of this year. Um, it's for an Australian restaurant. And here you can see the concept and the cover from um, uh, the concept for the cover comes from a photo from the very very nice landscape where that restaurant is located. It's how the guy said it's very elegant. <laughs> it's like, it, I kept it very simple because I want to have the images tell actually more. And we used the colors from the cover as well for the divider pages. And in the back you have like a, a section with all the food and the recipes. It's a lot of type. I didn't, you know, it was the first cookbook I designed. I was like... Yeah, that's another book we designed for Regina Gallery, the Russian um, gallery. And we were, the cover is in, uh, inspired by the art pieces, um, as you can see here. Um, yeah, the frame the frame, it's inspired by the frame. And uh, his name is um, Igor Kosheliev, and he have a PhD in um, Renaissance painting, so it's also connected to that um, topic. Inside page, and that's the back cover. Um, that's a small story about the back covers. I asked them if he can send over an illustration, and they said for the first, yes. And then uh, the, the date for the printing got really closer and closer, and I asked, can I get the illustration? And I said, no. And I said, why? And he said, yeah, we don't have time. Or he said he had have no time to do it. And I said, we need this illustration. So sometimes you have to force people or so. And at the end, we got this illustration. And I'm really happy about it, that at the back cover is this illustration. That's a book we designed for the Guggenheim in Abu Dhabi. It's a bilingual book in Arabic. So we ended up like doing a lot of like Cyrillic English, or like Russian English and um, Arabic English and Chinese English. I'm working on another book, Chinese English. Um, it's for like a show for their collection here in Abu Dhabi, I mentioned that before, um, called the Creative Act um, Process, Presence, or something is called Heal Express of the book so you just need to turn the book to read it because um, the Arabic you read from the right to the left is opener pages so it's like two columns going through the book left is um, English right is Arabic and when we get commissioned on a project like that, we always think about, okay, you know, how can you deal with like this bilingual? Like Arabic usually starts from the right to the left. So the back cover of an English book is the front cover for like an Arabic book. So we had three um, concepts, we presented them. The first one was like doing the landscape, which is kind of like what we did it at the end. The other one was a concept of like separate them, having like images, uh, um, text and artworks. And the bottom one's like turning the book 180. So if you want to read the Arabic, you're going to need to turn it and, you have to, and turn it um, on the back cover so you can read it from the right to the left. Book for like an um, Italian artist for was launched this year at the Venice Biennial called um, Roberto Corrighi in cooperation with the, um, we designed it for the Museum in Geneva. Uh, it's a very massive, the first book, big monography almost 500 pages, the table of content. Here's, um, we had like two sections in the front, we put in all the essay on a different stock and printed like black, like one color. And here, and then we had like a long image flow with little stories in between. 
lot of image, different image material on different backgrounds, and at the end, like a very extensive bibliography, like a so-called back matter. And book I designed for Fadian, it's called Black Architecture Monochrome. Um, that's how you come in the book. The idea was like, you having a gradient of black, working with gray, so it gets darker from each page. And then you have images shown of buildings, which are black. A book for John Bergerman, maybe someone know them. We designed a typeface for him. It's for Chronicle Books. We, that's the typeface we designed. Comes with a lot of like alternatives in uppercase and lowercase that it gets like closer to the handwritten one. Here it's a lot of like literatures you can put in and play with that. And here the strikes through and of course icons. And this is this is not, nothing we designed. That's what John Berger then John Bergerman did out of did with this typeface. So he published a couple of books like recently where he just really used the typeface. And it's really fun to see how he uses that. Um, the most recent book we designed, uh, Jean Pauvier is a uh, French architect. He built all these mobile houses in the 50s. He, did, he, doesn't, he didn't call himself an architect. Here are spreads of the book. We don't have the actual book at the moment. It's just got published. It comes with like a French, French and English edition. The French one is like published. The English is going to hold back because they were rebuilding all these houses, if you see here, in at the Luma Foundation in in, I think Lyon is it, in France, and they didn't have all the photos ready for the book, from the book, or like for the book to include all the houses. So we just kept the English edition out there, and now we're gonna like put in images to the English edition, which are not in the French edition. So this is like also things you have to deal with conceptually, you know, how you deal with like two editions, and there's an exhibition opening, the book needs to be done, but not all material can be in. And coming up with concepts like that, we just draw this out to communicate with the publisher how we can do like a 200-page book, page book for the um, French one, and then if you add like pages, how where they got in there in the 240-page book, et cetera, et cetera. And this is kind of how we learned book design. <laughs> no, <laughs> we just no. So we didn't design these books, but. You know, nobody taught us book design, so we were just like really, we never read like any of these kind of like books, how is book design, well we just did, we just were just working a lot and just doing a lot of book design, we were just curious and printing out and cutting, redesigning and redesigning again and again, and that's what I would do if you want to design books. Um, we're gonna go for a drink like after this. So if somebody wants to join, then we're gonna go here, around the corner. Can we do Q and A? Yeah. Yeah, of course. If you have time for that, you know, I think we're already ten minutes over. Okay. Okay. Anybody have questions? <laughs> Scream. <laughs> Um, I'm just wondering, when you guys are designing your books, do you usually go from the guts to the outside cover of the book? Like, do you start from the inside out, or do you design the cover and then work on the inside? I, I think it cover always comes at the end, which is sometimes, yeah, you're really late and then <laughs> You have to design the cover at the end, but um, sometimes we, yeah, there is no, there is no really answer to it. But I think you normally uh, just deal with the content and then come to a cover. Um, but yeah, we try try it hard to not forget the cover, and so while the process, yeah, yeah, I think we just come from the inside out a lot of times because we look at the artwork, so like at the content, I think. You know what you can do with the content and how you can support the content, and I think it's important. It and uh, it also depends on like um, what kind of like um, project you're in there. Very tight schedule, no tight schedule. Um, that also influences like 
I prefer and I recommend to start very early on with the cover and just have it like parallel to the um, design because it's going to change. But I think it should be around somewhere because otherwise you forget it at the end and if you put it like together very very hasty at the end it's gone it's not going to be it's not going to be good it's the same with the material i think start to be early with the material is very important you know what's the interior stock actually otherwise you're going to end up with some stock they're going to give you somewhere and it's like it's not that what you expected but it's tight at the end and like all this production thing takes a lot of time, you know, they need to calculate the paper, they need to order 10 tons of this, it needs a shipping time of four weeks, you know, something, that's why I think you need to start with the material in the beginning. With these complicated So usually you get dummies from the printer. Like I think one dummy is in the estimate. And we learned bookbinding, so we can do bind a case actually we did this yes you get them you get them you get even like the whole one I showed that, that with the potato on top of it I did I think I had like three four rounds of dummies with them for the Rauschenberg we also had like four until we got the thickness of the cardboard you know, it's a very, it's a little bit of fragile binding, you know, until you get the binding done and the right thickness for the covers is not too heavy, so you have a couple of rounds on that. Is there ever a moment where the content, no, you, the design becomes content? <laughs> I think... I had an artist like that monography for the Indonesian artist I designed. He came back and was like, oh, the artwork looks much better in the book than in real. So it might, I think you can do a lot like with design and maybe this is then design. But I'm trying, I'm trying to avoid it actually. I don't want to be like over top that content. Yeah, I know this question. I always heard that question. And um, why? Why is there potato on the cover? Why was there a potato on the cover? Maybe I'm German. <laughs> no, actually, there's not really like a deeper concept on that, of like why is the potato on the cover? I think um, sometimes I think it needs to be like nice or like beautiful, and I think it works as well. But out questioning everything and over questioning everything. That's what I think. How do you persuade publishers to publish your book? What do you mean, like persuade? How do we persuade publishers? They usually want to go safe way and safe way and um, easy to produce, but your books are kind of unique and different. Can you repeat? Um, um, how do we persuade? Yeah, how 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 are we um, persuade the publisher? Because our books are like very unique, like crafted, and there's like sometimes a little bit like you know you have die cuts and all that. Um, I think it starts really with um, the client. You know, you know, some of the books were really we were sitting with the artist. There was no publisher. Publisher came in later, for example. So you have a different. And if you have um, I always think about when you design the books, you, you have to deal with like, you know, for example, you have a publisher and you have an artist or like an art institute. So you kind of have like two clients. The art institute want to have this and the publisher want to sell the book. So you kind of like, in between, you need to please like both of them, which is sometimes challenging as well. Because, um, but if you have one of them on your side, it's much easier to, to do these things. and. To convince people doing these things, it's like going in a meeting and showing these things. And and I think if you bring an attitude of like you're like, you know, if you if you're happy yourself with your idea, you're gonna present it like in a very in, with a different motivation, you know. So it's like if you wanna really wanna do this, um, I think you're gonna make that happen. And another thing, how we approach these projects is like we're not thinking about like oh we don't have the money, you know, oh we can't do this because I think there's limits your creativity and your thinking you know i think if you start 
very high up of like, oh, I want to do the craziest thing, the craziest thing. Of course they're going to kill things because they don't have the money. But at least like you thought high, you're going to end up maybe here. But if you even not thought high, you're going to end up there. So I think it's always like, and in that case, I think the process is very important that you, in your process, that you experiment a lot and not limit yourself of like, oh, they don't have the money or I'm sure they don't like it or whatever. Just, just show it how you like it. Like, I think you need to convince yourself first be be before you pull out a design. Yep. Hi, uh, how do you two split up the work between projects? Like, do you always rotate the roles, or do you have specializations each of you? Yeah, I think at the beginning we we were uh, working both on on design, but after a while it was not really. Um, yeah, we had to split the projects. Like everyone, everybody's um, um, responsible for a client, but we are showing us the design and then talking about the design. But one of each of us is working really uh, then on the project until the end. Yeah. Um, economically, I think each of us works on a book. But I kind of know what he's working on. He knows what I was working on. And we have a weekly meeting where you just share all the designs or like talk about upcoming projects and and you know we work for over ten years or twelve years together, so you have kind of like, like developed some trust and 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 a lot of experience so that's I think it's it's a big part of you work like that close with someone you need to trust these people. I probably no, it, it didn't. We had like only one self-initiated project, but I would probably try to my I don't know. I, I would like to do a poem book actually or something like that. Well, it's like challenging. Or like putting all my poems into a book. <laughs> they were floating around in so many notebooks. Something like that I would I could do, but not design. You know, we don't. I would not like do a designy designy thing. Like more like some personal or like write about music. Or um, does the increased adoption of ebooks and electronic reading media affect your design in any way? Um, we get asked to do ebooks here and there, and this is something we're gonna outsource. We're not doing it by our own, and we're gonna have, you know, you have the print edition, and then you outsource it and have some people doing the technical adaption. I think there's some ebooks out there from us. I think two at least, yeah. But in the sense of designing the book itself, does it impact at all? You know, a book is an object and the screen is a screen, so there's definitely like a difference between these both. So, um, but I do think the book is gonna be survive like the painting or the vinyl nowadays. Any other questions? I have a question. Can we go to drink the beer? Sorry? Can we go to drink the beer? Yes, yes. Do you have German beer there? I don't know. I had this address from Andrea. <laughs> Thank you.